27 people were killed in this attack on Aden's airport last month as the newly formed Yemeni government arrived. The United States said those responsible must be held accountable. And although the Houthis said they weren't to blame, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has announced he will designate the Houthis as a foreign terrorist organization and Abdul Malik al Houthi and two other leaders as terrorists. Nearly six years into the war, the Houthis remain in control of a third of the country, home to 80 percent of the population. That's despite an air and ground campaign led by Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates and the local forces they control. The Houthis frequently stage cross-border attacks on Saudi infrastructure and commercial shipping, with civilians sometimes caught in the middle. The situation on the ground is perilous. More than 230,000 people have been killed in the war. The UN says 10 million others are at risk of famine. And aid agencies fear the U.S. decision will push even more of the population towards starvation. Four in five Yemenis now depend on aid, much of which comes through the Houthi-controlled airport in Sana'a and the port of Hodeida. Pompeo says waivers will be available for the delivery of food and medicines, but there's real concern about the impact on both the humanitarian crisis and the economy. Some of the impacts that we're afraid of seeing would be that uh, food prices, which are already extremely high, would go up um, as import companies start to, to fear dealing with Yemen in the face of these sanctions. This was already uh, the world's worst humanitarian crisis. It was already a situation where millions of people are struggling to afford food. And food rations have been halved for millions. Our famine warnings have just resurfaced. So this is really a life and death matter that we're talking about. Efforts by the World Food Program have held off famine, for now. The UN's food agency won the Nobel Peace Prize for its work keeping millions alive in Yemen and many other areas where there are wars and conflicts. Executive Director David Beasley told Al Jazeera last month that U.S. officials know exactly how difficult they're making their work. We'll do whatever we need to do. We always have. Whether there are sanctions or designations or not, we'll do what we can to reach the people. Our job is to let the leaders understand clearly what will be the ramifications and what the difficulties that will be for us to reach people. Yemen is already in an extremely volatile, fragile state. With I, I, I can't begin to tell you, we are on the brink of famine right now in Yemen. But there may be hope. The Washington Post reports that President-elect Biden's foreign policy team is against the move to designate the Houthis as terrorists, and there may be a change once he's in office. Andrew Chappelle, Al Jazeera. Well, for more on this, let's bring in Baraj Shiban. He's a Middle East and North Africa caseworker at the human rights organization Reprieve and joins us by Skype from London. It's good to have you with us uh, on the news hour. Aid groups uh, don't seem to think that a terror designation uh, will help ordinary Yemenis and the situation they find themselves in. Uh, what's your view? Um, uh, first of all, thanks, Hala, for having me. Um, as you can imagine, this move, um, basically, a lot of Yemenis are mainly split between uh, the uh, the two options. Uh, from uh, the main uh, concern, I would say, is that um, a lot of the private sector um, are concerned uh, that a lot of insurance companies, uh, a lot of um, uh, um, uh, you know in the international banking system would have a lot of concern when they deal with the um, with um, uh, any kind of trade they do with. Uh, Yemen, especially with the northern Yemen, uh, the areas where the Houthis, uh, where the Houthis control. Uh, now, on the other side, uh, of course, we we cannot forget the um, bombing of the um, uh, Aden airport, where you have 27, 27 civilians uh, killed, including a journalist and three humanitarian workers, and more than 110 people. Uh, injured, and you have constant uh, planting of landmines and sea mines, um, putting a lot of you know uh, um, uh, commercial shipping uh, in 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 danger, and the increased use of ballistic missiles imported by Iran. And I think this, uh, specifically, their the close relationship that the Houthis have built, in and, and it's been increasing in the last couple of years with the IRGC. 
um, has pushed the uh, Secretary of State to uh, designate them as a terrorist organization. Yes, but in, in terms of the, the people of Yemen who are caught in the middle of this dreadful civil war, uh, who are on the brink of famine, according to the World Food Programme, how exactly will a terrorism designation affect their lives? They're caught in the middle of this. They don't have enough to eat. And designating the Houthis uh, a terrorist organization, is that going to make their lives better? Well, I mean, I think it's hard to imagine what could uh, what could be done uh, in the current uh, current circumstances. From one side, yes, um, there is no denying of the fact uh, there will be um, uh, implication and uh, an effect on the lives of uh, a lot of people living in Yemen. But also on the other side, let's not forget that the. Um, uh, UN food program itself was the one who said that their um, programs in northern Yemen have been affected by the Houthis. They're unable to deliver food, they're unable uh, to deliver aid, and the beneficiaries have been, um, uh, you know, uh, diverted uh, by the uh, by the Houthis. And they have, including David Baisley, he have mentioned that numerous times uh, in in uh, in um, just in 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 2020 uh, alone. So I think. It's it's not an ideal uh, an ideal situation. Um, a lot of uh, people would be uh, pro uh, pro the designation because of the actions of the Houthis. Yet at the same time, uh, the other side, the a lot of Yemenis have a lot of concerns regarding the trade and the complication on the humanitarian programs. Um, that are already facing a lot of difficulties in the country. Uh, but uh, how practical do you think this measure is, though? Because it's set to come in on the 19th of January and the US is going to get a new president on the 20th of January, one day later. Um, and for to all intents and purposes, the Biden administration don't appear to think that this uh, move helps in any way. It, it seems like more of a political trap that's been set. So, again... Do you think this is likely to, to, to stay in place? Will it have any material change on the situation of the people who are caught in the middle of this? Uh, I think the Biden administration, yes, they have the right to reverse the decision, but I don't think personally they will do it because no one wants to go out of their way to defend uh, to defend the Houthis. Um, however, no, but they the might Biden administration want, but they, might they, be... They, they might not want no, to defend me, the Houthis, me, but if they want a political solution to this civil war in Yemen, you're not going to get it by designating yeah, one me, side terrorists and one to, side uh, the good guys. Yeah, uh, let me try to comment here. They might be at a unique position because now they have a leverage point on the Houthis. They have a, a card that they can bargain with them. They can say, we can pull you off the designation list in, in, in order for you, you know, to move forward, to give some compromises on the table. Um, it is not clear, like, I, I, I'm not sure I can entirely for sure say this is what's going to happen on the 19th. I think we're all going to wait and uh, wait and uh, wait and see. Um, but uh, the uh, and, and the implications on the designation doesn't have direct effect on the Houthis, as they are not part of the you know global financial system. They don't have bank bank accounts, but they affect them indirectly through, for example, a lot of their allies would have a lot of concerns regarding you know do we want to associate ourselves with a organization that has been designated as a foreign terrorist organization. I think a lot of questions are still there, and I think this um, announcement by the State Department has been made today. Uh, but we only have to wait and see, and you see what's going to happen. And wait and see we shall. Barra Shaban from the Human Rights Group, Reprieve, thank you so much uh, for joining us here on Al Jazeera.